our viewers may not know this, but um, James and I go back quite a ways, uh, all the way to um, junior high school. And we, you know, as, as you know, friends kind of do, you, you sort of drift apart and don't talk as much once you get, you know, into the workforce and out of school, you don't see each other as often. Everyone's busy. But what sort of reconnected us was during COVID on Facebook, which I thank God no longer have, <laughs> I, w- I would post a lot about, I would post a lot about contentious things. I'm a philosophy major. I don't, uh, I don't shy away from a good debate. So I would post a lot about COVID and I was actually like, I was with the narrative. I was getting, re- I was trying to see if I could get vaccinated early, uh, you know, when it was restricted by age. Like I was really, you know, I was, I was definitely judging people who weren't wearing masks in public. I wouldn't ever, I wouldn't say that I was ever, um, like a gullible, you know, like trust the media and, and pharmaceutical companies at all, you know, without, without question. Cause I know, you know, from, from family issues and stuff, I, I was very aware of, of what the pharmaceutical industry in, in conjunction with government can do, but I was definitely wrapped up in the COVID narrative for sure. And James, you were, I don't know if you would describe yourself as this, but I certainly would in that you were essentially immune to the bullshit from it, from the beginning. And you started asking me questions that I didn't know the answers to. And I didn't like that. I didn't know the answers to, and it got me thinking, you got my gears, the gears in my head turning. And I did such a 180 that probably within, I don't know, probably like a month or two of us, of you like commenting on some of my posts and sort of asking me like, well, what do we know about mRNA? What do we know about, you know, how about myocarditis? How about all these things? You know, these, these issues that now they've become so common parlance that, you know, even, even the staunchest COVID, uh, a lot pro with the narrative, even they have to admit now that, okay, well, <laughs> we had a problem with myocarditis. We had a problem with, um, governments intentionally suppressing non inoculation related treatments and preventative treatments. And why wasn't anyone talking about vitamin D and sunlight and, you know, so I'm, I'm rambling now, but you, you changed my mind on COVID and that, and that left like, such a such a mark on me and i am so grateful for it and it's it's um i wish that we had had these conversations before because i would have never i wouldn't i wouldn't have done anything really that i did prior to actually gaining a more inquisitive mind about why the narrative was it was what it was and what some of the motivations behind why governments and pharmaceutical companies were acting as they did from the beginning and, and why, it, why it worked. Like, I feel, I feel so silly that it worked on me at all now, like looking back on it. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'm in a much better place now in, intellectually about it. Yeah. The fact that you had a major shift is I think huge because there are some people who are constantly revising or testing what they believe in why. And there's others who never test that. And they'll believe one thing for, the majority of their life will just be, they'll believe what is fed to them. And I think once you start going down that path, you start realizing there's a lot of things that we take for granted that, well, maybe, um, maybe these things aren't as solid as maybe we, maybe we thought. And you said that like, I'm immune to some of the, the, the COVID messaging and more that my skepticism was already heightened from years of playing around with like diet and exercise. Mm. And Mm. very much I was wondering like, well, why does the diabetics association still recommend a moderate to high carbohydrate diet for something that like affects (laughs) that raises insulin? Like I had all these questions Mm. from a nutrition standpoint, looked into the studies and then my mind was blown on like, how either ideologically motivated some of these studies are, how captured they are by finances and, or how people can't get outside of these traditional views of what cholesterol means or what, like that a diet should consume this amount of carbohydrates, no matter what, like these are ideas that haven't been shook. And there's actually a 
psychological resistance to these ideas that, and we, we've we seen this in practice throughout the nutrition and diet sphere and exercise sphere, but we saw it in practice in COVID and mm-hmm. very much I was following a bunch of, these would be like, it was interesting to see the doctors in the low carbohydrate sphere saw right through most of the COVID BS. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that, that was one thing. Some of them were diving deep in and they were like, well, exploring, well, what about the data we have on masks and what about this and that? So I didn't, didn't buy into it mainly because of that. Um, but I'm glad we've had some conversations along the way. And I, I, this is my favorite thing about this podcast is being able to explore these ideas. And I imagine even though we're doing this episode right now, we may shift our views on some of these issues later on. Yeah. Um, when we get to the Israel Palestine, that's something we maybe have less of a clear one-sided mm-hmm. view of that issue. Now that we've gone a little bit deeper and we have more of a nuanced view and like any of these things, there's no political benefit to nuance um yeah it 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 always it always politicized like you always get benefit for having like a a a very one-sided almost cartoonish stance that doesn't take in all the complexities Mm -hmm.